This week's episodes were brought to you by the generous support of Andrew Henninger. Hey folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome to another episode of our Unity programming series on making a base building game, currently still codenamed Project Porcupine. We're going to work on something actually fun today. Uh, we're going to work on inventory items, or sort of loose stuff that's on the ground. Because right now, uh, when we go to build things, our character just walks up to something, actually walks on top of something. Yeah, that'll get adjusted later on. Right now, walks to a tile and just, boop, instantly appears. Well, actually, after a tiny bit of delay, a wall will appear. But eventually, we're going to want to change it so that he's got to go and grab grab some, you know, steel plates or something on the ground, and then carries it over to the spot to start working on it. Something of that nature. And that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to get that started. So what we're calling inventory items or just stuff that's on the ground as opposed to furniture, which is installed. Uh, I've gone ahead and made a very little simple graphic for like, I don't know, steel plates or steel ingots or, or something like that, just so that we've got something to play with. Uh, the other thing I uh, actually... Technically, that was added in in part 36, but we didn't talk about it. Um, some people sent me in some great suggestions for some fonts that we could use. These are all sort of um, open source or Creative Commons licensed fonts um, in here, so they can be redistributed with the project. Right now, there's five fonts in here. We probably aren't going to use all five. We're probably going to standardize on one or maybe two. Like We might use one for sort of titles and headings and another one for text, and we'll see how it goes there. Um, so right now, the uh, the download file is going to be a little bit bigger than I would like because we've got all the fonts in here, but we're going to see how it goes going forward. And uh, yeah, wait, uh, import settings? When I load it up and then click away? No, there we go. Oh, no, it does actually... Something gets set. Yeah, sure, apply. I was hoping for a preview, but I guess we'd have to load it in here. Anyway, these fonts look very cool, very sort of futuristically. And futuristically, excellent. And we're going to look at them later on. But I'm not going to redo the buttons quite yet. But they are in there if you want to take a look. They look quite cool. All right, so I've got my little still ingots thing here. So what are we going to do? We actually do already have a class for inventory. Right now, it's just an empty class. We have it in there because our tile class, if I actually open this up, our tile class currently does have a placeholder like point to what inventory is in my spot right now and do, 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 come on there we go um if we look for where's inventory in here there it is right over here da, 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 da. so this is just placeholder right is something like a drill or a stack of metal sitting on the floor and one of the things we're gonna have to address is the concept of the stack size for inventory um because uh, furniture, you basically just have one piece of furniture in a tile, but in inventory, we can definitely see a situation where we might want to be able to stack like 50 units of steel in one tile, for example. Um, although some types of inventory maybe doesn't stack. For example, the, the furniture example, right? If you have a sofa, now the front sofa can be installed as furniture in a room and it might be like a three by one area. Or maybe it can be disassembled, sort of Ikea style, put in a box where it only uses up one tile of inventory space somewhere in a stockpile, but you probably don't want to be able to stack 50 sofas in one inventory space. So some things might be stackable and other things are not stackable, for example. But we need somewhere that we're going to track that. And we could track it as part of the tile, you know, some sort of integer, you know, in size or num or something like that. But I don't think that would be appropriate, um, especially since... When our character carries goods around, our character may want to be able to carry a stack of stuff. You know, if a wall needs 10 units of steel, well, shouldn't our character maybe be able to grab 10 units of steel as one go from one tile, carry it over to the wall, and build it that way? And I think that would be relatively fair. So I think the sort of um, the count will actually be a factor of the inventory class itself. You know, some sort of like int stack size or something like that some sort of value, and probably some sort of like max stack size for the type of inventory, which is something that very much like furniture is probably going to be generated from a prototype. There'll be some sort of prototypical version of, of say, steel. Like, you know, so assuming we have, say, a string, which is something like, uh, what do we use for, for furniture? Something like object type. And let, let's have it default to something. So we're just going to create a dummy one. The object type will be steel ingot. I don't know if we do ingots. Maybe steel plate because ingot sounds like the sort of thing you'd be smelting and whatever. It seems a little lower tech than we would want. So let's call it a steel plate as a default. Obviously, we'll be going to be constructing this in some way later on. And we'll probably have some sort of integer like uh, max stack size. Um, and for steel plates, it could be something like up to 50. For other things, they have a max stack size of 1, in which case they might have a, just a slightly different behavior. Like we probably, on the user interface side, which is what we're going to be starting on in a moment, you know, when you're in the world here and you've got a stack of this stuff on the ground somewhere, you probably want to see the little um, ingot symbol 
you know, our little the little graphic that I made um, with a little number, you know, like 37. We've got 37 stacks of steel in this tile. But with our sofa example, we probably don't want to put a number. So most likely what will happen is if the max stack size is just one, then, or maybe if the stack is currently sitting at one, then we don't show a number. But I don't know, if you have one steel plate in a tile, would you still want the number one to be shown there? I think we would. I think for stackable things, you'll always want to see the number. So anyway, that, that's, that's a question for later, of course. Um, so our max stack size for steel plates will be 50. And it never makes any sense to have a stack size that's less than one. I mean, if you hit zero, then you just remove the stack completely. There's no longer a stack of things over there. So, I mean, we can assume it's going to look something like this at first. Is my... um. Last cursor not being captured. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, uh, we're we're gonna assume something like this is a default. And again, in in a moment we'll come back and we'll construct some things using this. But that's gonna be okay. And let's assume uh, for now. Let's just make these public. Probably later on we'll use um, getters and setters with different kind of accessibility. But for now we'll just set them at public. It'll make it easier for us to read the other data. And then yeah, we'll come back afterwards and uh, set up some sort of. Um, set up some sort of permission thing in in the future but that's going to be a good start so let's work on getting this to be visible actually let's work by setting up a a little dummy stack of this in the world so when we go and create the world uh we can go and stop this when we create the world all right so world uh it starts this is where we set up the world this is to set up an empty world um does it get run when we load Actually, I don't remember about that. When we, because uh, we load from here, don't we? Do, 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 do. Find load. Saving and loading. Get schema, read, write. So when we read, we do set up the world. Hey, I just realized something. Oh, right. This is... It, huh. How are we instantiating the world? Do we have more than one constructor? Oh, we do. We do have an extra constructor. Where's this one? Oh. Yeah, it makes sense that this would be in saving and loading, but I was getting very confused here for a second. Let's get both of our constructors in the same place. There we go. So, um, this is the default constructor used when loading a world from a file. There we go. And so we don't always create a construct uh, character. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a dummy steel plate somewhere. So in fact, um, after we load the world, I'm just going to have a, a, def a dummy sort of thing going on here. Uh, well, hold on. we got to get back. Uh, ba, 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 ba. We've got a lot of work to do, actually. I do want to create a dummy piece of steel. Maybe I'll make a button. Nah, it's okay. Listen, we're going to load the world. That way we've got, you know, a reasonable thing to do. So after it reads everything here. So this is when, no, that's the right. Read XML. Uh, debugging only. Remove me later. We're going to um, create an inventory item. Like so. Um, ba, 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 ba. where do we actually, hmm, where do we actually call this? Because I want to make sure that the, um, the callbacks, no, we're going to be fine. So the idea is at this point, the world has been created. It's been read from a file. It's been created and everything like that. Then we're just going to create an inventory item. So, uh, inventory inv equals new inventory. And we'll just set it to default. And by default, this is going to set up sort of our, our steel plate idea, right? Right. Um, and then presumably, just like everything else, we're going to want to have some sort of list of inventory. So let's do something like that. Um, although I think ultimately inventory will also belong to rooms, but we might have a, a master list for certain purposes, which seems perfectly reasonable. So inventories, I guess, for consistency, a little bit of an awkward word. You, do you really have inventories? I guess you could. I don't know. Anyway, inventories over here. Uh, and then we instantiate in setup world. Yeah, okay, which seems pretty fine. So inventories equals new list of inventory like that. Lovely. 
And just for the sake of having things be sexy, we're going to line those all up. Excellent. So in a read XML over here, uh, we're going to make sure that inventories dot add inf. There we go. So this is this is just a debugging test. Now we actually have inventory in the world. And oh, where are we going to put it? Now that's a great question. Inventory right now, yeah, it's been added to a list. And well, we probably need to add this to a tile. Uh, so let's assume that they link both ways. So we're going to have, um, let's again, for the sake of simplicity for now, we'll make it public. Uh, with furniture, do I, I call it my tile, don't I? I think that's what I did. And I think that's probably a fine, no, just tile. Okay, so we'll do that. Tell you what, I'll, uh, no, for now, I'll just make it completely public. Again, we're going to be rewriting this later on, but yeah, public tile tile. There we go. So it's going to work exactly the same way. But then we have to like add this furniture to a tile, right? Because it or this inventory. Inventory doesn't just belong in memory. It's always going to be attached to something. It might be a tile or it might be a character. Character. Uh, I guess cha because I can't go car because that's a that's a data type. That's a no go. I mean, I guess I'll just write it out. That's fine. Um, Inventory is either sitting on the floor in a tile or inventory could uh, or can be carried by a character, but never the two. So we're going to go and we'll probably put in some sort of validation here. You can't both belong to a tile and a character. Um, so we'll, we'll keep track of who's carrying us. Although I'm not actually convinced that we need to know. I don't know that the inventory cares about this. I don't think the inventory is ever going to have to refer to its owner. Actually, I think that's very true. I think that's very true. So instead, we're just going to make sure that the tile here, it's got its inventory. So we're going to create some sort of a function. We do have a place furniture function. So for consistency, I'm going to call this one public bool place inventory. So they're, you know, a little closest. Whether placing inventory is exactly, you know, sensible, that's going to be good enough. So we're going to go inventory inv instead of this obj instance here. Even there's nothing wrong with calling it obj instance, but inventory seems better. Um, we were installing whatever was here before. Yeah, it's basically, actually, it's very close to working the exact same way. So, if, um, if our current, or sorry, if inventory is equal to null, so apparently you can pass in null to uninstall anything. Uh, so we will just set our own inventory to be equal to null, and we'll return true to say that this was successful. Because no, even if we were already null, it doesn't matter, we can still be successful. Um, if inventory not equals null, yeah, here, good enough, let's copy this, if inventory not equals null, trying to assign inventory to a tile that already has some, but we're actually going to have to check because if there's already inventory here, we have to verify that uh, if they're the same type, then we can combine them, that's okay, that's okay. But otherwise, inventory is equal to this. So if inventory is not equal null, <clears throat> um, then there's already inventory here. Maybe we can combine a stack. So first, if inventory dot uh, type object type uh, is not equal to inv dot object type. Then we throw up an error here. We say debug.log error. <clears throat> Trying to assign inventory to a tile that already has some of a different type. So that's a no-go. So we turn false to say, hey, that you're not allowed to do it. Um, if, so at this point we know they're the same type. If inventory dot uh, stack size plus inv dot stack size is greater, come on, greater 
then I mean I can use the either one inv dot max oh inv dot max stack size then again we have to put it in there <clears throat> trying to assign inventory to a tile that or trying to assign inventory to a tile uh, that would exceed max stack size. So again, we return false. But otherwise, if we're here, then the stacks can be combined. So what we do would be returning true, but we're going to use take our, our existing inventory dot stack size, and we're just going to add in dot stack size, and that's that, and we will return true. Now, that would mean the old stack is still currently sitting in the world's list. Which is interesting. Or it's still going to sit in someone's list. Because for optimization purposes, we definitely do need a list of all inventories. What we can't have our characters do is check every single tile to see what their inventory is and if it, see if it's the right type. Where we're going to definitely have our lists, either a global list that belongs to the world, or a list that become belongs to each room, or maybe even we might have like a dictionary so that we can clearly, we can easily say, hey, I need um, a steel plate, uh, give me a list of all steel plates in this current room or something like that. Um, you know, there's, there's going to be ways of organizing it. They'll definitely be in some sort of greater data structure. So the thing is, how do we remove it from that data structure? I mean, we can't just delete the object. I mean, first of all, you don't delete objects in a managed uh, memory space, right? If this were something like you know, C or C++, sure, you could, you could free the memory, you could delete the memory allocation, but that still means you'll end up with a pointer somewhere that points out into outer space in a way that is a double plus on good. So what we could do, I mean, where would we do it? Um, <clears throat> At some point, we have to tell the world, the world and all the rooms and everything that has a list of inventory, that, hey, um, if this stack goes to zero, right? Like, if I've gone and just brought a stack down to zero somewhere, you have to remove it from the list. And in fact, if a character goes and picks up a stack of objects from the ground, well, that could be the same logic, because I was going to say what, what we have to do is, like, if you pick up a full stack, then we also have to send a signal. But rather than, you know, picking up a full stack where, like, we set the character's inventory to be equal to the old pointer, we could create a new instance of the object, grab the amount of stuff it needs, and if it just happens to leave exactly zero on the ground, well, again, that's a case where we have an inventory pile of size zero, so that needs to be cleaned up in some fashion. So I think what we might end up having is some sort of centralized inventory manager class. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Because again, we are going to need a relatively sophisticated system for a character to be able to ask, hey, I'm looking for steel. I am positioned here in this room. Find me the most logical steel for me to go to. Um, our first implementation will probably be a simple, we'll just do some sort of A star pathfinding on every stack of steel and find the closest one. We'll just brute force it. But we will need to finesse that later on by partitioning the world and organizing things a little bit differently. And again, maybe it can check the current room and then so on and so forth. But um, I think that's what we're going to have. We're going to have some interface by which a character can just say, all I need to do, I don't want to know how you do it. I just want you to tell me a stack of steel I can go find. So, I think we need that. Is it going to be under utilities? Mm, no. I mean, it's really part of the model thing. It's like inventory manager. And I think that's what we're going to have. Let's go and create something like that. Inventory manager. We're also we're going to have a job manager later on. That's actually going to work fairly simpler to that, right? Because right now we have a job queue. Uh, maybe I'll rename job queue to job manager, or or rather, more accurately, the job manager might have multiple queues, right? And it'll be the same thing. The character will simply want to add the, ask the job manager and say, listen, I'm me, and I'm standing here, and I've got these skills. Just give me a job 
that I should be doing right now. Maybe it's, you know, a high priority job that's been on a queue for a while, so I should do that first. Or maybe it's just something really close by, so I should do that. You know, it's gonna weight the job priority with some sort of combination of like, an internal job priority rating, plus an age rating, plus a distance rating, which will somehow factor into this is the job this character should be doing right this second. Um, so we'll probably have a job manager thing, which has multiple job queues. So this inventory manager for now is going to be really simple. So in our world here, um, I'm just going to have, I'm going to take out that list. Inventory manager is not a mono behavior class, it's just a generic class over here. And speaking of generic, it's going to have a generic here. That's going to be fine. In our world, we'll just have public um, invent inventory manager, inventory manager. We're going to have that. And then when we have inventories down here, instead of doing that, say inventory manager equals new inventory manager. And that's all there is to that. And then in our little test code over here, we read the XML. Yeah, so I didn't add it to the list here. Instead, inventory manager is going to, because we're not just, inventory just can't exist in space. It's always got to be added somewhere. So we'll have some sort of function here. So we should never add place inventory. We should never call this directly anywhere else. It should really be part of inventory manager over here. So we'll have a public boolean place inventory. What it needs is a tile t and an inventory um, inf. I don't want to use um, i because I usually that's usually an index for a loop. So okay, we'll use tile and inv over here. And I mean, we could still have this code in place inventory, which I think is fine. And that's one of the things it's going to do. It's actually, it is going to call tile.placeInventory inv. So first thing we'll do probably is try to place this. If this is equal to false, again, I could put a not whatever, but this makes it very, very clear. Um, the tile did not accept the inventory for whatever reason, therefore stop. So we will return false ourselves to say that this is a no-go. But otherwise, it was successful. Um, so then what we'll do is, let's make a constructor, public inventory manager, new list of inventory. So we'll add it to our list of inventories at this point. Inventories um, dot add um, inf. Uh, no. Yes. No. No. Ooh, yeah, that's kind of interesting. So, in theory, this is a list. Whoops. I'm not going to do the triple slash version. I'll just do that. Uh, this is a list of all live inventories. Uh, later on, this will likely, likely be um, organized by rooms instead of a single master list. Well, or in addition to, or in addition to. We still might want a single master list just to make it easy to show the user um, their total list of in all inventory items, right? If imagine we have some sort of panel that the user can open or close or some sort of window that gives you just a breakdown of everything that you own. Well, it would be easy to iterate over this instead of having to iterate over every room and then add everything together into one other list. So, I mean, this is just a little extra memory and a little bit of extra shuffling around as inventories get created or destroyed. And certainly right now, because we're not doing room-based inventory tracking or anything like that, we are just going to use this one master list, which is not going to be efficient for pathfinding later on, but for now it'll work. So. At this point, at this point, um, inf might be an empty stack. If, oh, did I properly handle the case? Yeah, no, yeah, ooh, that's interesting. I don't want to do this. So I was saying, like, if there's not only already inventory, we just set the tiles inventory to this inventory. But we don't want to do that. I don't think we're ever going to want to just assign one to the other. 
instead, what we're going to do, it's not everything's fine. At this point, we know that um, our current inventory is actually uh, null. Now, we can't just do a um, direct assignment because the inventory manager needs to know that the old stack is now empty and has to be removed from the previous um, lists. Where does it? What, how on earth could you ever add something to inventory over here, to uh, tiles inventory? What's well, never going to come from another tile, right? It's going to come from a character, or maybe we've got some sort of object that generates tile stuff next to it, right? Sort of factorio style. You've got something that spawns a piece of inventory next to itself or something of that nature. Um, can we just do this? Because the thing is, at inventory, like, if it was merged to another stack. And we can definitely see this. Um, if inv uh, dot stack size is equal to zero, so we remove it from our list. Inventories dot uh, remove inv. And that's fair. Um, uh, we may have also created a new stack. Um, on the tile. Would we ever create a new stack? No, maybe we don't. Well, not right now with the rooms, right? Yeah, okay. So right now, since we don't track individual rooms, we could just say the stack that was on the character is now the stack on the tile, and the stack in the character was probably already in the inventories list. Or maybe it isn't. Maybe it doesn't count as part of the inventories list at that point. But later on with the rooms, I mean, whether the inventory that was being carried by the character or not is in some sort of master list, it definitely won't have been in the room list, right? As soon as the character drops it on the ground, it then has to be added to the inventory for that room, which we don't do yet, but it's easy to imagine that situation. And in fact, it's easy to imagine a situation where maybe stuff that's being carried is no longer into any mastered list. Maybe then it goes into sort of a limbo other than the fact that it's adjusted to a character. So it doesn't count as part of our overall supply count while it's being carried. I, I, maybe, that, maybe that's a little bit weird. Um, so, I mean, we can create, like a tile can go from a null to actually having a stack, but it won't have created a new stack out of nowhere, unless for some reason the character is only putting down half of the stuff it's carrying, which seems kind of sort of impossible. I forgot this is the best way of organizing this. Tell you what, I think for the sake of, of uh, sort of consistency, even though it will generate a little bit more overhead, I think we will screw up less if we never, ever, ever just make a direct assignment. We could. We can do it. I've gone through the logic here in my head enough. We can do it with this, and then we can catch it somewhere else. But let's assume we never create a direct assignment. So either something gets merged into an existing stack, which is what we're dealing with right here, right? We are merging two stacks in some way. Um, oh, which actually should mean... Um, yeah, and the old stack, uh, in dot stack size, uh, then goes to zero. Uh, I guess, what if we allowed, you know, for a little bit of stack merging? What if, so right now we're bailing if the new size would be too large. Instead of that, instead of that, let's... Let's let them merge um, uh, a stack and still keep some on the parent one, right? Because let's say we've got a stack maximum size of 50, uh, and there's a stack on the ground that's 40, and their character's holding 20. It's perfectly reasonable for them to want to drop 10 on the existing stack to make it 50, and then they'll put the other 10 somewhere else. So instead of bailing out, yeah, we're going to do that. So we're going to say place inventory never creates a new stack. 
even if like a stack that's being held can be put completely in a tile, what it will do is create a new stack and just set the old stack to zero. And then we can like, you know, work out the difference here. That That's going to be perfectly fine. So now um, what we're going to do is something like, we can do it with like a single sort of equation, but let's break this out. Let's say uh, num to move is equal to, um, so we're just trying to drop the total stack size to start off with. But if our current inventory dot stack size plus the num to move is greater than the inventory dot max stack size, then, and again, we could do this in one line, but I'm hoping it's a little bit clearer. The num to move is actually going to be smaller. It's going to be the difference. We're going to say um, it's going to be the inventory's uh, max stack size minus the inventory's current stack size. So that's going to be the difference. And then we won't move a whole stack. And then what we'll do is take the inventory that's on the ground. We're going to add num to move. And in our inventory that is being being dropped, we're going to decrease its stack size by num to move. Sometimes that will bring stack size down to zero, and other times it will not. Sometimes there'll still be some left here, which we're already starting to account for over here. Excellent. OK, I like that. And so over here, we're never going to create a a brand new, uh, we're never gonna, we're never going to just move the stack. We're always going to create a new one. So we say inventory is going to be equal to in say dot clone. We're going to do that sort of behavior. So we're going to go and make um, the same sort of copy constructor, the protected copy constructor. Protected. Uh, you don't have to be avoid. It's just inventory, where we get inventory other going to be protected. We're not going to call it directly. It's probably not going to matter for inventory, but because of polymorphism um, and, and generics and, and base classes and trying to instantiate things, it can be a little weird. Uh, and then we can have a virtual um, inventory clone, which takes an inventory other. And all this does is return a new inventory cloned from other like that. And so when we clone, we say object type is equal to oops other dot object type and max stack size is equal to other dot max stack size and our current stack size is equal to the other dot stack size like that easy peasy and I think because now we have a constructor we have to make sure that we explicitly make a default constructor otherwise we won't be able to instantiate anything all right so we've got that this should work. Oh, I'm gonna have to hit an F8 for for a compile. Oh no! What? Uh. Oh, um, public. There you go. Right, and you have to return something. Um, just for the compiling to work, we're gonna assume that if we get to this point, it will be true, and we have a single enter there. That would be an assignment, not a comparison. And, oh, right, you don't have to, hold on. <clears throat> you don't need another. You're cloning yourself. Like that. F8. Excellent, good, okay. So that's good. So we make a clone of the old one, and then we set the old one's stack size to be equal to zero. So it's a, we never do a direct assignment because we need to know the old stack is now empty. So we need we make a clone of it and put it within the tile. And then the old stack, which the character was carrying or, or whatever, wherever it came from, we set the stack size to be equal to zero. Because then when inventory manager runs, we can check to see if the old stack size was zero and remove it from everything, clean it up from everything, and that'll be fine. Um, and there's no may. There's no may. Um, we have, uh, well, no, there's may. Um, if the tile was previously empty. So what we have to do is if there's a new, so if something, then we have to say inventories dot add this new stack, which would be the tile dot inventory. Oh, right. Which is protected. Hmm, 
that's interesting. No, I mean, I can make it public in some way. That that would be fine. Um, and that's probably what we'll do. But there is the idea, tile that place inventory, instead of returning a boolean true or false, could return the copy of the new inventory that it made. But I kind of like it just being a boolean because it compares to place furniture. And place furniture is not creating any sort of copy or whatever. So I think it's fine that it's a boolean, but we do need um, some ability to modify this. I think what we'll do is we will update this to be a property with a public get and a protected set like that. So now I can say, um, I guess we'll do it the hard way right now. There's probably, well, because what I was going to say is if inventories dot contains um, the inventory or the tile dot inventory is equal to false. So if it doesn't already contain it, we have to add it in. But that means us doing a lookup every time. If we have multiple lists and things like that, it might be a pain. So I think what might be better is something like um, inventory uh, old tile inventory. Well, really, we're just checking to see if it's null. So bool. Um, Tile was empty. There we go. It's going to be fine. Is equal to uh, tile dot inventory equal to null. So that's it. So if the at the start of this function, if the tiles inventory is equal to null, then tile was empty is true. Otherwise, it's going to be false. So um, if at this point tile is no longer empty because we've we've successfully completed this, right? This returned true. Therefore, tile is no longer empty. But if tile was empty then we have to add it to our various arrays and dictionaries and yada, yada, yada. Right now, we just have a single list. That will definitely have to change later on, but for now, that's going to be good enough. So then we can say, oh, tile was empty, so let's make sure to register our tiles inventory in our list so that we know that it's there. And it, now we have something searchable. This is so not the, uh, the data structure we want. We're probably going to want some sort of like, some sort of sub-listing, some sort of dictionary where you can feed in like, um, it's a dictionary of lists, actually, is what's going to be. Can we do that now? F it, let's do it now. So, public dictionary, where the key is a string, that's going to be our object type. Um, yeah, that's fine. I mean, we could also have a pointer or a prototype or whatever. The key is a string. The value is a list of inventories that match that. So then we'll call this one inventories. Uh, which means we have to just change our instantiator over here, like that. And inventories. So now it's inventory where the key is equal to our old inventory dot um, object type. And then it's from the list, we can remove this inventory from that list. There we go, that's going to be fine. And then inventories here, we're going to go uh, inventory of type uh, tile dot inventory dot object type and that has a list so we're gonna add the tile dot inventory to that sublist for that type probably want a, a helper function for this but and the other thing we have to do is make sure that um, if inventories dot contains key tile dot inventory that object type uh, is equal to false. So if it doesn't already have a listing for, say, iron plates, then we need to make sure that it does and in fact gets instantiated with an empty list. So, because first of all, if it doesn't, if it's not in dictionary, this will fail. But not only that, um, if the if it is in the dictionary but it's pointing to a null list, then that's not going to be good either. So we're going to create a new list of type inventory if it's false. There we go. All right. So now, I mean, I haven't really tested this yet. But, and we're, the video's gone on long enough, we're not really going to get the visuals. But the question is, if we were to say, um, inventory manager dot place inventory, and he needs a tile, so we're going to get a tile at um, width divided by 2, 
height divided by two. So we're going to put a tile in the middle, which is the same place our character starts on an empty level. Um, so we're going to get that tile and we're going to try to add this dummy piece of inventory to it. We'll probably get some errors because I suspect something has gone terribly wrong in here. So if I hit play, that only happens on actual load here, not the blank thing. All right, then we get some lovely errors right from the start. So let's take a look. Uh, yeah, you can't double click on this to get a reference. Inventory manager line 26. Oh, of course. I'm not checking to see if this um, object type is in the list, which it, oh, right. Yeah, because it only gets created over here and not there. This inventory might not be in any sort of list yet if it was just created sort of out of thin air, which is what we did. We created some inventory out of thin air. It didn't exist yet, so it's not in anything. So it won't have to be removed. So I guess we'll just check. Um, just make sure if it contains it in the dictionary, then remove it from that list. Okay. Let's try this again. And load. Okay, we're no longer getting an error. We don't see anything because we're not rendering that inventory sprite on the screen, which is what the next thing is going to do. And actually, what the th thing we're going to do. So we've got a character sprite controller, furniture sprite controller, job sprite controller. And I've talked about it before. Every time I've said it, whenever I've made like you know one of these, one of the first things I do is grab one of the other ones and sort of copy and paste the previous one. Um, and I always say, yeah, when you're copy and pasting things, it's often a good sign that you need a subclass. But um, I, I, I was going to say, but, you know, maybe it is, uh, but I said, it's not that, that, we're not actually sharing that much code between them, and so maybe a subclass isn't appropriate. And I was going to say, this time I'll make, I'm going to make a generic sprite controller and then start to um, uh, derive these, you know, job sprite controllers, or rather it's going to be inventory sprite controller from that base sprite controller here. But really, like, there's not a whole lot of shared stuff to do. Um, on created. All right, you're a bit different, job sprite controller. I forgot about you. You are a wee bit more different than some others. Let's compare it to something like um, the furn or the character sprite controller. It might be even better because it's nice and simple. Got this load sprites function. We could have a generic load sprites function that is shared between them all because it basically works the same way. And what if I change our sort of resource structure, then I've got to update like four or five files, but pretty minimally. And actually, I don't even know if we need a, um, uh, a shared subclass as much as, because really, what else are you sharing? I mean, you're, you're going to have some sort of map, but what the map maps to is, well, I guess it's always going to be string to sprite. Oh, but then this bit, it's going to be from some type of object to a game object, that's gonna change. It might just be fine to have load sprites be a, um, a static function in some sort of utility class. Okay, then I guess I'm not too worried about it. And I guess with that in mind, maybe I can't just, I'm just gonna cram this into, um, into this, we're gonna be fine. I'm gonna duplicate the, all right, there's not a right click on there, is there? Control D, duplicate character sprite controller. So this is gonna be, inventory sprite controller copy open I had forgotten that I just closed this window open 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 so this is the inventory sprite controller it maps from inventory to a game object uh, inventory and we're gonna use f2 to quickly rename this to inventory game object map F2 to rename this to inventory sprites. It's gonna get the world, it's gonna load sprites, it's gonna do this. Again, this is inventory, not that. Um, we do need to register for some creation. There needs to be a function in world for inventory. Inventory gets created or gets, well, or unregister the creation thing. It's going to take inventory and inventory and for callback inventory created and like that. And 
and we'll probably have to register for a change as well so that we can make sure that we, we get told when a stack size changes. For example, that's going to be okay though. Um, and then we have... Right, here's where we call the callbacks from, right? Call. So we have this place furniture and place character and all those things here in world. Do we want that also for inventory? I think it's probably fine, actually. Oh, well, this, this can be like spawn brand new. That would be a bit of a difference. Okay, for right now, again, we're going to keep going with our little dummy code over here. So after we create the dummy object, we will call, if uh, callback inventory created is not equal to null, then we'll make sure to call callback inventory created. Um, we just call it. Uh, oh, wait, with the new inventory, like that. Um, yeah, that's kind of interesting. So, I mean, I'm creating this object. I'm putting it here. But it's not this that we want to give the call back to. This thing will probably not exist when this call gets finished. Or, it will still exist, but it'll be of size zero. Because it will have been completely placed into some uh, ground tile. Yeah, that's very interesting. The inventory is definitely a different beast than some of the furniture. So, really, what we want to say is, this tile that we created, this is the thing. And again, we'll, we'll try to end up with something smarter later on. I'm really starting to think that place inventory should maybe return, not a Boolean. But we're not even testing for the boolean this here at this point. We're just assuming it works. So, the thing that got created is the one that belongs in this tile that we could have just um, grabbed here for explicitness. We'll do something like this. Tile t is equal to that. t and t.inventory. Something like this. So now with this callback is going to get called. Uh, do we actually... Inventory sprite controller. We register. Um, register inventory created. And we're going to name this function here to on inventory created. Like that. And it's going to take in inventory. I was using a C there. That should not have been. Um, I'm going to call it inv. It's going to be fine. Da, 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 um, We're going to rename this to inv go. Inventory game object map. We put an inventory to the game object. Uh, the name is going to be taken. It's not going to be called character. It's going to be the inv dot uh, object type. This is going to be the name of the object. And it needs to... Oh, that's quite interesting. You know, this is, hold on. This is going to be a bit different. Because again, it's not really that inventory is being created so much as the stack of inventory in the tile has been changed. Now, it may have been changed from not having anything to having something all of a sudden. I'm wondering if we don't want an inventory sprite controller. If instead, we just want to add more code to our tile sprite controller. Right, we have that tile sprite controller. Uh, but what happens when a character is, is carrying inventory? Hmm, yeah, that's a possibility. So, I mean, there's a couple of different solutions. I guess we could go back to having the inventory know if it belongs to a tile or a character. Which is mostly going to be useful for the visual system. And that's pretty much it. Because otherwise, what needs to happen is this callback needs to be changed, so it also needs to be told, you know, what tile it's attached to. But what if it's attached to a character? So, okay, I think we're going to change this back. And I'll make this public for now. Tile and public character uh, character. Although, these two should be mutually exclusive, so when we come back and add sort of little helper functions or getters and, and setters over here, we'll have to put in a little sanity check to make sure that it can't be placed in both. Now, right now, we can't attach things to um, to characters, but our inventory manager, or rather our tile thing, when you place inventory in a tile, we're going to make sure that um, 
So here we already, this is an existing stack we're changing. So here we've created a new stack. We're going to make sure that our tile is set to this. When we clone, we're not going to clone the tile or character part of it. We're just going to clone the values because this is mostly indicative of where it's being carried. But just to be sure, I'm going to make sure to explicitly ensure, well, no, I'm not going to do that because later on I'll put in a sanity check. When tile gets set to something, we're going to make sure character gets unset or something of that nature. So now inventory knows where it is sitting, which means over here I can go inventory.tile.x, inventory.tile.y, because we need to know that and put it in the right place. Um, apparently we have a, oh yeah, the player one front, right. For the character, we had a hard coded in, um, font name or a sprite name. Uh, so really the sprite that we're going to use is going to be the inventory dot object type. So we need have to make sure those things match right now. Our hard coded thing is just being called steel plate which I think is fine. So let me just make sure that my image here, image inventory, so instead of being called steel ingots, I'll call them steel plate because we right now require all that to match. doesn't have to be the case, but it seems like a pretty good and smart way to do it. Uh, sorting layers inventory. So we grab that, which is good. Um, and yeah, right now inventory doesn't have an on change callback, but we're going to want to do this. Fix me. Add on changed callbacks and we don't have an on character change we have or we do well on uh, hold on on inventory changed like that oh no on inventory created there we go we've got that we will need an on inventory change later on. Um, but we can just ignore this for now. So I'm gonna put in like, well, we don't need to debug this. It doesn't not get it called, but fix me. Uh, still needs to work and get called. So right now, this this does old stuff that doesn't apply anymore. And in fact, it's still going to give us errors in compilation. We're going to come back to this. This this code needs to be changed because it's not doing what we want. And we probably want to respond to the calls in a few different ways. So we still have some work to be done on inventory. Though. Wow, this video has gone way over. I really want to split this in two. It's still going to be split into two. But the other, the second video might be a little awkwardly sized. Um, let's see what happens if we try to run this. First of all, on inventory created. Oh, um, oh right, this is after on start. So instead we're going to say, uh, inventory uh, inv call inventory created, but it's not world.characters, it's going to be the inventory manager. So world.inventory manager.inventories. And again, later on, this will be removed completely and changed completely differently, but this will work for now. So we need to make sure if there's any pre existing um, inventory, i.e., from a world load, we've got to go and do the callback. And in fact, the inventory is coming in on world load right now. So if we didn't run it here manually, we would never show anything. So that's a thing. What are you complaining about? Oh, right. Oh, uh, yeah, because um, this is a dictionary. So we need a slightly different list. So it's inventory dot um, keys. So we need a string. Uh, ob object type, uh, and then for each inventory in in world dot inventory manager dot inventories for object type, we then call that. There we go. So all the steel plates will get created. Then all the next thing will get created, and so on and so forth. <sighs> more. Uh, oh, I'm willing to bet. Yeah, this is going to be changed to inventory. We just had a mismatch. Inventory. 
the signatures weren't matching correctly. Okay, no more compilation errors. So let's go ahead and hit play and then load. Well, we didn't get any errors. Oh, what I, I don't actually have the controller in there. So we're going to create a new controller, new empty. This is going to be called inventory sprite controller. And we're going to make sure to add this component to it. Now it'll actually attempt to run, probably give us other errors. Load. We did indeed get an error. Uh, interesting, line 64 of in inventory sprite controller. Oh, 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 it's not loading the sprites correctly because I didn't update this path. I believe I just call this inventory. So it's trying to load the sprite for a character. Well, it's nice to see that it's trying to run that. It's trying to load a sprite from a character, uh, from a, with a name of steel plate, but in this folder instead of this one. One more time. Okay, well. Well. It's there. I suspect it has to do with the fact that we don't have an inventory sorting layer. It's there in the world. It's got the right sprite assigned, but you can't see it. And that's probably why. Um, so we want... Uh, I don't remember where you set up the, the render layers. Hang on a sec. <laughs> where do you do that? My mind just went blank. Um, sorting layers. Add sorting layer. Tags and layers. Oh, okay, all right, it's the same layer thing as you would set the physics one, that's right. Um, so we want something for, we need an inventory layer, which is gonna be, I'm gonna say, here. Above tiles, above furniture, but below the job indicators and below the characters. Well, I don't know, maybe the job care indicators can be down there. Okay, so now it has a layer, and I think that's why it wasn't showing, because it was on the default layer, which was below our tiles. Holy crap, there it is. Okay, it is doesn't look quite right because this graphic is centered pivot. I'm still thinking we might go and make a change. So we need a, we need a bottom left. I might change everything back to be centered pivot. It might ultimately be a lot easier for us. Okay, so it's there now. Oh, you know what's not right? Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. I wanted to, oh yeah, I wanna go and take a look at this in the editor. Uh, where it is, <laughs> I want to hide the UI in the editor. This is not helpful. Um, it's because the size of the tile, right? Because my graphics is 128 by 128 and I said pixels per unit is 100. So I'm going to set this to 128, which actually is probably too high res of an image, but it's not lined up properly because it's that the, the steel plates was bigger than one unit by one unit. There we go, there. Now it looks properly centered. You can see by the graphics over here. It is sitting in that tile, and that is indeed the same tile as the character is normally when it spawns. This is a center tile on our map. So our character was spawning there, and that's in the right location now. So we have inventory. We created a piece of inventory as sort of just a random thing in memory, right? If we go look at world, um, not world, world, no, actual world, not world controller. Right, presumably later on, this is gonna get read from our XML file or somehow get created by us hitting a button and just spawning some initial inventory. Because we're gonna need something to start with so that we can build, right? Sort of like when you start off in a real world and just goes bleh and just drop some extra resources from the pod or, or something of that nature. So we're gonna have to have some sort of resource in the world, which when we create a new world, we're gonna do something like this a handful of times to make sure that there's some steel plates to start off with, or it's gonna be read in from the save file. Either way, we just create one that exists and we make sure to stick it on the tile. Uh, so we find a tile, we stick it in the tile, and we do that, and then it gets rendered properly. And we could we could throw a few more of these in here. Um, we could we could repeat this process a few times. Something like this. And tile. Let's go and add one, a couple of tiles to the right, and whoops, come on. And we're going to create another one, uh, one to the right and two up, something of that nature. So if we go and give that another go, uh, stop, play, and load. 
There you go. We get our three bits of metal on the ground over there. These are currently stacks of one, I believe, with a max stack of 50. What we're going to do next episode is we're going to add a little bit of a uh, wee bit of text on these things so that we can actually know the size of the stack. So, oh yeah, that's the other thing we could do over here is we could start them off with like our, no, I was going to say random. We won't make it random. We'll make this one a stack of, um, of 10. Uh, inventory dot stack size. And then over here, we'll make this one a stack of 18. And we'll make the last one a stack of uh, 45. There we go. Now, this is all fine. This will work OK. But we don't know visually that these stacks are larger than that. So it'll be nice to see when they're there. And of course, we're going to want to change our character so that when he builds a wall, first thing he's going to do is try to grab some of this metal and then carry it over to the wall. So we got a lot of work left to do on this, but it's looking really good. God, this went for an hour. I apologize. A lot of times this is longer than a lot of people can watch. Some people will be happy. Some people will be like, this is crazy sauce. Um, but there you go. Thanks for watching, folks. And I'll see you next time. Thank you to everyone who pledged to support this in February and is making these videos happen through March and early April. And of course, these mic check supporters. We've got Wes Elden Boving again, Craig Mortel, Nail Vickstrom, Neil Blakely Milner, Speedy Savant, Valent Cake Fiend, Aaron Toyson, Marius Field Vold, Ole Peter. Talgo, probably Ole, Julian Ogier, Lafong, Steven Steger, Michael McClintock, Kale the Quick, Drazion, Bite Rash, Adjective, and Andrew Henninger. And everyone who just watches and shares and favorites and comments and subscribes, thank you so much for just continuing to make these uh, videos a thing that we can do. I think it's pretty awesome, and I hope you do too. See you next time, folks.